Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna have a talk about this, the Tesla Model 3 Performance, and the reason why I didn't go with a Tesla Model 3 Long Range and instead went with the Performance, because as I said, we bought this car to be my wife's commuter car to work, so it kinda makes sense. If you're gonna have a commuter car, why didn't you go with a longer range and pick the Performance instead? Well, the thing is, as some of you might know, I used to have a, uh, my first Tesla was a Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is now called the Rear Wheel Drive, and that was such a fun car to drive. I was so surprised specifically by the handling, but also the power from a single motor in the, in the back, I think around 295, 300 horsepower, something like that, but it felt so much more, so I thought, Okay, we're gonna have the range of the performance, which is 315 miles of range. The the Model 3, uh, the long range, 334 or something like that, which is just nuts. And in it, by itself, in a league on its on its own when it comes to EVs nowadays. And then you have the standard range plus, which range is about 263, 65, 67, something like that, depending on wheels. So this fits right in the middle of that with 315 miles of range with the gorgeous Uber Turbine wheels, 20 inch wheels, which I love. And they definitely set this car apart from the other two trim levels. But I also wanted to have, since I had the Model 3 Performance Standard Range Plus and that car was so much fun, I thought I want to get the Model 3 and I want to experience it as the trim level that is supposed to be the most fun to drive. And that's exactly the reason why I went with the uh, performance instead of, uh, of the long range. Was because of the track mode, you have improved cooling and you have re better regen braking in track mode. And you also get, uh, not anymore actually, you don't have a lower suspension anymore, but you do get upgraded brakes for track use, which is also very important and something that I think maybe um, the other two trim levels, uh, that's maybe their Achilles heel if you take it to the track. It's probably gonna be the brakes. So this has all of those upgrades and I wanted to experience that for myself. And that's why I decided to go with the Tesla Model 3 Performance. So how has it held up? I've put close to 3,000 miles on this car already. And I mean the handling, it's such a good handling car. Compare this to, I've been driving a couple of EVs lately. I've been lucky to drive the C40 Recharge, for example, and we have the, uh, what's the other one? Kia EV, EV6, I just drove that one. Comparing those driving experiences to the Tesla Model 3, some of you are gonna say that I'm just a Tesla fanboy when I say this, but the Tesla Model 3 is in a league on it, of, of, of its own when it comes to handling and performance. That's just a fact. If you go and drive both or, or, or as many EVs as you can, and then you step into a Tesla Model 3, doesn't have to be the performance at all because I remember how fun and how good of a handling car the Standard Range Plus was. And I, I remembered that when I was driving the EV6 and the uh, C40 Recharge. The C40 Recharge sit a little higher, so that might that is obviously um, uh, should be compared to the uh, uh, what's going on up here. Is it is a closed road here? I think we have to turn back because in Florida there are a lot of these places. You drive up a road and then boom, it just goes into a private complex where you need a gate code or something to get in. So I guess we're turning around. So what I was saying is, I think both the EV6 and the, um, I keep forgetting, the C40 Recharge, they should obviously be uh, compared with the Tesla Model Y, but I've driven the Model Y as well. The long range and the performance, and still they handle a lot better than the EV6 and the uh, C40 Recharge. Uh, yes, the EV6 that I had was only the rear wheel drive car, so it wasn't the quickest one and it's not really su set, you know, set up for handling and having a lot of fun around corners like this, which this performance just, oh, it's such a fun car to drive. I never get tired of it. It's just, uh, just addictive to have a car like this and I can't wait until we move out of Florida and I actually use this car on some more fun roads than just straight line and a couple of 
very hard to find the corners that we have down here. It, it was just surprising to me how much fun that car was. It wasn't the best looking when I first got it. I got it with the optional, uh, I think they are maybe eight, 19 inch wheels, but I switched them out pretty fast. So the end result of my standard range plus, I actually think that that car looks looked a lot better than this Model 3 Performance because I got it to the point exactly how I wanted it to look. I did the, the wheels were the big thing uh, for the Saturn Range Plus because it planted the car exactly how I wanted it and in the rear it sit flush with the, with the body of the car. I kind of want to do something similar to this. I think uh, I don't want to mess with the range of this car though so I might do spacers or something in the rear just to bring out the the wheels a little further to the fender to have that uh, sumo wrestler look when you look at it from the rear view that I definitely had with the standard range plus because I had 275s in the back so the back really looked like it was sitting nicely and that was my favorite car uh, favorite part about the standard range plus was how I was able to make it look exactly like I wanted it to look. Maybe I'll do something similar with this. I'm gonna have to ask Lindsay first because she's driving it every day to, to work, so <laughs> it's kind of her decision. But uh, eventually I'll probably do something similar with this car. So that's the main reason why I bought the Tesla Model 3 Performance. And then you do have the price differences too, obviously. When I bought the Standard Range Plus, it was, I paid $37,000 for it. And if you look at it now, Today, at the at the time of this video is being posted, you know Tesla is uh, constantly changing their pricing. So maybe tomorrow it's going to be a different pricing. But if we compare the price that I paid to the prices that they have now, it's up by ten thousand dollars for the rear wheel drive car, which is pretty nuts to think about. But I think that has to do a lot with demand, supply and demand. Then you have the um, uh, Tesla Model 3 Long Range, which I believe goes for about $53,000, $54,000. I think it's actually more, more expensive than that. I can't remember. I have to look it up. Hold on a second. So we have the Standard Range Plus is $47,000, and this is as of today right now. And then you have the, the Long Range Model 3 goes for $58,000, so it's $11,000 more than the Standard Range Plus. And you have the Performance for $63,000. So I guess if we had a longer commute than what we had right now, I maybe would have gone with the Long Range, but I would definitely need to put different wheels on the long range immediately. What's really a bit of a bummer when it comes to the 2022 performance is I, they don't do the lowering springs anymore from, from Tesla themselves. I know it was lowered by less than half an inch, but when I saw a performance, a 2021 performance, I was able to tell the difference uh, compared to a long range and now the only differences are the uh, the exterior design differences are the uh, the rear spoiler the carbon fiber spoiler the red brakes which you can uh, make your you can paint your long range brakes uh, red if you want to but they're different brakes on the performance and I think that's about it I wish Tesla had a way of separating the performance more visually from the rest of the lineup uh, it would be cool to see, and not just the wheels, the spoiler, and the red uh, calipers, but maybe they will do something like that in the future. It's pretty funny to think about. I I've thought about this uh, for a bit. Why do people love Tesla so much when we know that they have quality issues sometimes? Not all cars, but uh, a, a larger percentage than you would want from a brand new car. Have some panel gaps still in the Model 3 and even in the Model S that's been around since 2012. So why do people love Tesla so much? Me too, like why do I love this car so much? Even though I had the problem with the front, uh, in the front wheelhouse, they're flapping around, so I had to put some foam in there myself to, to stop the flapping around in, in highway speeds. I think it's because, I, I just think it's because of the, the performance of, of these cars. As I said, even the Standard Range Plus, they handle so well and I think it's 
such a surprise from such a young company to be able to build cars that handle this well and that seriously feels like sports cars i can't wait to uh, test out the we have a model s right in front of us right now but uh, the the plaid model s and <laughs> driving that thing I don't know how that's gonna feel like I've heard that the braking is a little uh, worrisome at some point but at the same time you have regen braking working as an additional brake so uh, I get why they didn't put like massive uh, drilled ventilated brakes on the plaid but they still probably should because it's a serious performance car but I can't wait to drive that and just experience uh, that handling if it's it might not even handle as good as a Tesla Model 3 Performance because it is, after all, a bigger, bigger car. Well, that's kind of a quick uh, video I wanted to make about this subject. Why I personally decided to buy a Model 3 Performance over the long range. And if you're in the market for these cars, the Tesla Model 3s, I think you should... Uh, I think, I don't... Maybe design isn't that important to you as it is to me. So... If you want the full range, obviously go with the long range. It still does 0 to 60 in 4.1 or 4.2 seconds, which is crazy because that's just the middle range in the lineup. So it is still a very potent car, but I wanted this for the exterior upgrades and also for the performance upgrades that you get in the Model 3 Performance, even though they don't offer the half an inch lowered suspension anymore on the model 3 performance thanks for watching and if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i'll be more than happy to try and answer them for you thanks for watching again i will see you in the next video